would appeal it. I didn't necessarily think that it would work out successfully. But he's got his way into the semi-final. He's been around for a long time. Two-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist from a couple of months ago. Two-time World Championship bronze medalist. So he's looking to, to move on from that bottom step of the podium up to at least one higher. Like Bibasinov, who we saw earlier in the day, Sakhan Bibasinov. He's had great success, but he's not been able to convert bronze medals into anything greater just yet. He's been boxing at the highest level since 2010 when we saw him in the World Youth Championship. So Batchkov, Armenia in the blue, Cruz, Cuba in the red. And the question here really is, can Batchkov bring his educated pressure to bear on Cruz? He tucks up Batchkov, looks to move his head, walks his opponent down, tries to get onto the inside, and then when he gets there, he is generally accurate. He places his punches well, and he will absolutely have to be that here, because getting onto the inside and up close against Cruz into a position to throw and land is a difficult thing to do. If you can do it, then you have to make it count. Nice jab there from Cruz. And there's the upper body movement that proves so problematic. Quick hands on the inside. Lead hand pumped out by the fighter in red. I think pretty much just sandwiched by the by the gloves there. Batchkov tucking up effectively and then looking busy with those hands when he gets close. Left of the body got through there from Batchkov. Cruz just sliding across the ropes to his right hand side, looking for the one two. Again, mainly taken on the gloves. He tucks up nicely. One, two to the body, then let go to the head there, Batchkov, but it didn't land, and Cruz drops his elbow on the body punch, and the, the defences here from these two close up are, are tremendous. Very, very impressive. Batchkov just pushing Cruz back to the ropes, and this is superb inside fighting. Not that much is getting through at the minute, but that's almost what makes it so impressive. You do have to look carefully with Cruz as to what gets through, because it's quite easy to miss punches. A lot of the time, they're just little tapping shots to the body. Heading into the final minute of round one, Batchkov, I think, has made a pretty handy start here because he's got onto the front foot. The fight has that kind of look about it. But he's covered up well and hasn't been picked off on his way in. In reply, you could say that he hasn't landed much either. There was an uppercut on the inside there from Cruz and another one. You could see the head snap back there. That certainly did get through. Voluntarily just moving back to the ropes. There, Cruz turns southpaw very briefly, switches seamlessly between stances. Batchkov leads off with a left, does land the right on the follow-up. The third punch of that combination from Cruz got through, a right to the body there from Batchkov, just about caught up with Cruz as he was skirting away to his right. Left hook from Batchkov to the head, then to the body, looking for the uppercut. Well, there goes the 10-second the clapper, and this has, been, this has been a terrific watch, this opening round. It absolutely has, and if you can get the first round against Andy Cruz, then you're in business. What say you, Ron? Has he maybe done enough? I don't think he has. I thought that was an absolutely brilliant first round to watch. High skill between two of the best operators in the business. Andy Cruz holding his feet more than I thought he would. And I actually thought he had a fair amount of success in snaking his shots between the gloves of Batchkov, who landed some heavy punches of his own. Terrific work in the pocket. But Cruz holding his feet more than I anticipated he would at this type of territory. Bobbing and weaving, terrific head movement, and not showing the footwork that he's so famous for, but just able to slide off and bend and dip and slip. And in the meantime, I thought he managed to snake shots in between the gloves of the man in blue, particularly the uppercut underneath to end his clusters. Brilliant, brilliant round of boxing really was and you could see the uppercuts get through towards the end of the round and the judges obviously agreed with you about the the rest of it too because they all went unanimously in his favor and Batchkov really does fight one way so it's not going to affect how he goes about things 
too much, but he's got to win this second round now. It might see him be more gung-ho than he was in the first, which could be a problem for him because Cruz is so adept of picking those gaps. There's nothing that he does that doesn't have some kind of plan behind it. If he hits his opponent on the shoulder, it's generally speaking because that was what he meant to do. It's a distraction, a trap that he's laying, that he's setting up for something else. Over the last few years, he has been as close to unbeatable in either boxing as, as you can get. Reminded you of, of his compatriot Julio La Cruz from maybe three, four years before that, a light heavyweight when people just couldn't really lay a glove on him. There was a crunching one-two from La Cruz as he was just stepping off to his left that went straight through the guard. And then as Batchkov tries to open up, he catches him a couple more times. A left hand gets through. And then again, the one-two does get through the guard. There's the uppercut. In the middle of all of this, Batchkov is having the odd bit of success, but it's Cruz at that kind of range who is having by far the better of it, which is pretty heartbreaking if you're Hovhannis Batchkov because that's exactly where you want the fight. That is where he would always want to get to, and he would back himself 100% of the time to beat anyone if he can get his feet that close and be able to work. But against this man, it's very difficult to get the better of him in, in any department at all. There was another uppercut there from Cruz. Batskov coming forward. A heavy-looking right hand there from Cruz. Was caught on the gloves, but you could still just see it move the Armenian. He throws that right hand. And he'll just feel all the time, Batchkov, that he's, he's on the brink of landing something big because Cruz makes you miss by such minute margins. Bizarrely, it probably almost encourages you at times. Into the final minute, deep into the final minute. And he's just sticking to the method here, Batchkov. He's got a tremendous engine. Just keeping those hands moving as, as fast as he can, Batchkov. But Cruz, again there, had just backed up, giving himself a little bit of room. And quite often it's the third punch of a three-punch combination that, that gets through. Just a little tap to the gloves, tapping to the head, dips low at the waist. Little tap there on the near side, landed, uppercut. And the corner absolutely loving that. And there's no more that he can do, Batchkov, is that this is good. He's got onto the inside. As I said, he's got onto that real estate where he really wants to be. And nine times out of ten, he would fancy winning from there, but not against him. Well, I think if this continues, because I expect the second round to be scored unanimously in favor of Cruz, and there's confirmation. But I think that this is shaping up to be a statement, perhaps ultimate victory, if it continues in this vein. Because Havanas Batchkov, as you say, is fighting the type of fight that he wants to fight. If you'd have told any aficionado of Aiba boxing that you've got Cruz and Batchkov, I thought myself that Cruz would move his feet far more than he is doing. Instead, he's standing with the man. And he's not the heavier puncher, but he's out boxing him at short range, staying in the pocket, giving him angles, slipping, sliding, and coming back with eye-catching hooks and uppercuts, just like that one before the bell. I think we're en route to seeing an ultimate victory for Cruz. But of course, Batchkov has got the guns to turn this one around. That's what he needs to do. Absolutely he does. So he's two rounds down with all five judges and and you summed it up pretty pretty perfectly there really. It's it's what I was saying in the second round that Batchkov would be happy with the territory he was getting and the way the fight was being fought, it just so happened that although this was his type of fight, it turned out that actually it's also Andy Cruz's. And the reality is that there isn't really any type of fight that isn't his type of fight. That's the problem that everybody's got when they get in there with him so 30 seconds into round three and it's more of the same really Cruz is slipping and sliding on the ropes there tucking up with that kind of cross defense going to the body with the right hand quick hands firing up the weight of shot at times Batchkov just sticking to it just sticking to it trying to keep the faith that he can land something big and make some inroads he has to that's the warrior spirit that's that's what makes these athletes as successful as they are. He won't believe that this can't be done, Batchkov, until he hears that final bell. Only then will it dawn on him 
that he might be about to lose this fight. That's just how they're built. Cruz just digs his toes in a little bit there and looks for the uppercut. Just leans into Batchkov and takes that space away from him a touch when he throws that right hand. Left to the body from Cruz. Right uppercut. Right hand over the top there from Batchkov. Landed high on the head into the second half of the round. And again, immense conditioning from these two because this has been... This has just been a high-level technical war, really, when you look at what has happened. There's been so much action, so many punches thrown. A lot of punches landed, many of them sharp, rapier-like digs from crew, some more kind of thudding, dense shots, if you like, from Batchkov, and neither one of these two has ever looked like taking a backward step into the final minute. Batchkov with his mouth is hanging open a little bit more now, but still puts that combination together. Cruz just having a little wrestle with him on the inside, gets hold of Batchkov and ties him up. Batchkov leans on and they come apart really of their, their own volition there pretty much. And it's going to be another bronze medal for Batchkov. Unfortunately for him, he ran into Kashawn Davis at the Olympics and at the World Championships in 2019. And in 2017, it was Andy Cruz. And it's going to be Andy Cruz again. So there goes the sound of 10 seconds remaining. And for the first time, really, the pace just dipped slightly for five or six seconds. There goes the bell, a touch of gloves between the two. And a lot of applause in the arena from people of all different nations there because that was terrific it was just absolutely fantastic to watch and Batchkov I mean he's got nothing to reproach himself for there has he but that will still that will still sting most certainly will as you say it's a repeat of the contest from the exact same stage of the world championships in Hamburg four years ago we're about to get confirmation which will send Andy Cruz the reigning world champion through to yet another Gold medal bout. So Cruz through to the final where he will face our young Turkish friend who we saw just a few minutes previously, Kerem Osman. And Osman will come full of belief, he'll be bursting with belief because that's just the kind of guy that he that he is. He's going to need to land something solid on Cruz quite early there, I think, to, to give himself a, a chance in that final. And that's something that, that really nobody has managed to do ever, as far as I can work out, in the, in the numerous times that I've watched him down the years. Well, I think that was a real statement win and we know that, you know, they've faced off before this same stage in Hamburg four years ago. But Andy Cruz, by boxing in the manner that he did, it takes away perhaps the one question mark that people had. Yeah, well, what happens when you put him in the ring with a real pressure boxer? Can he withstand the heat when you put it on him? He didn't use his electric movement there. He stood in, presented angles tucked up tightly and the movement that he demonstrated was from the head and the waist rocking and rolling and make no mistake he put some heavy shots into Batchkov particularly with his backhand to the body and the uppercut through the middle fantastic performance so all those who think that well if you crowd this man you're going to pose some questions that he might not have the answer to I think he just turned those back